Mr. Lee lives a couple blocks away in a government-subsidized apartment called Chauncey House. At the end of last summer, Mr. Lee's nonprofit landlord raised the rent 25 percent. Exasperation, desperation, that was what described my feelings and a lot of the tenants' feelings at the time. The tenants of the Chauncey House didn't know if they had the right to oppose the increase, nor did they have the means to hire a lawyer. So they went to the CPA, the Chinese Progressive Association, to look for help. And we know that someday, you know, one of the consequences of gentrification is to, you know, bring up the rent. And I guess we expected that to happen in the community, you know, but we didn't know that it was that soon that, you know, tenants are facing, you know, kind of double-digit rent increases. It's not affordable at all to someone like me who works in the restaurant. In the restaurant, you may get paid over a thousand dollars a month, and if um, I need to put out nine hundred dollars, that's maybe half or over half of what I earn. It's not affordable for someone like me. The federal guideline for calculating affordable housing is based on the median income of one hundred towns in the metro Boston area including wealthy neighborhoods like Wellesley, Newton, and Chestnut Hill. The Housing and Urban Development Department says the median income of a family of four is more than $80,000 a year. That is triple the average Chinatown household income. In Chinatown, I believe the median income is around $20,000 per year. If you use that guideline, you know, for working class neighborhoods, it's just not workable. And, you know, a lot of tenants will end up using all of their income, you know, to work, right? William Ho knows what it's like to grow up in a blue collar home. My family, when we came to the US, we lived in affordable housing. And I definitely see my family and a lot of the families that come in here. My mom is a waitress, and my dad works on an assembly line. It's very tough work. I mean, my parents, I don't think I really saw my parents the first 10 years of my life. They both worked double shift all the time. I was really raised by my older sister. He also works for one of the most influential developers in Chinatown, ACDC, the Asian Community Development Corporation. The ACDC partners with larger developers. Its profits subsidize affordable housing and community projects. The residents don't have the expertise that, re that is required to navigate something like developing a 300-plus unit apartment complex. Even with government subsidies, many Chinatown residents are still hundreds of dollars short of affording their own apartments. The federal government only gives incentives to landlords whose rents are affordable for households that make 80% of the median household income. In Chinatown, Many working-class families make 30% of the median income. ACDC tries to build 13 affordable apartments for every 100 apartments that are constructed, but it walks a delicate balance. Some activists say ACDC is selling its reputation to developers to make it easier to demolish Chinatown and build luxury towers. I think residents have to be realistic about what they expect from a nonprofit community developer. I mean, if you look at other CDC projects throughout the city of Austin, none of them are going to have the same level of affordability, or the same depth of affordability as ACDC's projects. And I think when you frame it in that context, ACDC has done everything it can for this community. There will be gentrification, there will be luxury housing in Chinatown, uh, there will be a smaller Chinese population in Chinatown. And I think the compromise that realistically can be reached is that there still will be in sufficient low income uh, housing so that m most of the people who live there can continue to live there. Asian Americans are the fastest growing ethnic group in Boston. And even with ACDC's best efforts, there still aren't enough affordable housing to meet the need. But Chinatown historically, at least for the immigrant population uh, has served as a place where they could get on their feet, they could find employment, they could 
access services that I think if they were dispersed, that it would be much more difficult for them. So I think that it's played that function. So I think that it's important to preserve that uh, neighborhood so that people can, can get on their feet. Over at the Chauncey House, Mr. Lee and his neighbors are fighting for their ability to stay in Chinatown and fight a 25% rent increase. Over a seven-month period, the CPA organized meetings with lawyers to inform the residents of their rights. They signed numerous petitions and demanded meetings with the landlord. They even sought the help of city and state officials. Without the help of CPA, we wouldn't have been able to wage this battle and this struggle against the landlord. Mr. Lee and his neighbors are successful in reducing their rent increase, but residents in other buildings have not been as lucky. Mr. Lee sometimes wonders what will happen to him, his family, his home, to the little place he buys coffee every morning and meets his friends. It's absolutely pertinent that Chinese people live in Chinatown because it is Chinatown, so, you know, that Chinese people see each other and have this community of um, fellowship, of, of communion, of people who look the same, who speak the same language. We're going to have to work really hard to preserve Chinatown. Um, because you have developers, you know, coming in with a lot of money and power and influence in the government. And you have the BRA, the Boston Redevelopment Authority, who approves, you know, um, any development. You know, they're going to come in and, and they're not going to stand on the resident side. And they, they're going to go for what will make more money. So we're going to have to work very hard to fight that and to change the power dynamic. Because, you know, who should have a say in a community? Who should have the most say? It's not the developers, not BRA definitely. It's the residents who are living here now. And I feel if we fight, if we struggle, if we go out there and fight for what's ours, then we will have a chance of surviving, or else we will be gentrified. <laughs>